Hi, good evening. This is Sarah Chiu. The program is Basket Starfish, our language core. Thank you for tuning in. Um, tonight I'm going to talk about you know the physical uh, lineage marker, as I have been talking a lot about the line and the H alphabet and the S alphabet. Um, tonight I'm going to show you uh, the physical evidences in all the cultures that you can see. Uh, let me begin with my slides tonight. Okay, again, I want to stress the point that, you know, this is the image I want you to think of, uh, just like a basket starfish, that we all share one uh, single core, and um, all those uh, so-called family trees are actually branches coming from the same core. They are not separate uh, family trees, and uh, because as long as we believe this different uh, family tree, the sizes are all different, and then we actually in a human hierarchy and I think this is something needed to be changed this is something uh, very very macho and I think we need to look at it in a very uh, much softer view okay and uh, the uh, this uh, research also sum up some uh, 30 something years of my traveling experiences so is it it is also from a feminine perspective from the East okay again uh, I will repeat what I have done uh, last week um, this is a word that I want you to pay attention to. The H uh, sound, a very guttural H sound, is always uh, written as K plus H, okay? And there's actually a lot of connection between the actually K sound and the H sound because they act they actually interchange a lot and the H actually sometimes written as KH and sometimes it's written as K, sometimes it's written as H. So that's why you will see a bunch of words that's actually to do with thread and the other words that I'm going to show you today, you know, will be very, very um, uh, closely linked to this picture uh, right there. Okay, so if you hear me out, because when I travel to places, I normally don't know how to read or write uh, other the uh, people's language so I use my ears and even in English you know I think we depend on too much in our eyes but if you hear it carefully you hear this okay core cord cohort cord they sound very very similar actually and then uh, of course you know in English now you know you pay a lot of stress on the K but the other thing I wanted to pay attention is also uh, closely linked together with the thread is the uh, guttural H sound. Uh, the, this is the hieroglyph H, okay? So it's uh, also form, you know, the uh, visual part of your word heart because it actually, it is the heart of the whole chord, okay? And also forms the word hug and also hosa and also the her, this a lot to do with the thick ropes and which ties up to a whole herd and then the smaller thread as I said you know it, it has a tendency to use the S or the Z sound like sin sim this way and um, as I explained already last week you know I will repeat it a little bit later so uh, now just pay attention to the H and the S transformation okay so this is Chinese high for us is also to do with the thread of the link or the lineage okay and then um, I will give you three words that you can think about it it is intrinsic implicate and inherent so these are the three different way uh, words that already built into our system that is closely related to this concept of threat first of all um, it is uh, the intrinsic part is a very important the tri part which is a three number normally you know when you uh, draw a branch or something like that it seems to have the three branches trailing into one and it is also the the tree image that's why the tree is closely uh, linked to a three and the image of a tree that is bind together to form one thing the implicate is actually uh, the very important word in this word is to ply when we started uh, human beings started to learn how to ply um, dip smaller thread into a bigger rope okay so it depends on how many ply you know it is 
the, the more ply it is, the thicker the rope and the stronger the rope will be. And the inherent, of course, you know, the he has a lot to do with the thread itself in many different languages, you know, in hieroglyph, in Chinese, Hai, and all these Semitic languages like Hai, Hot, all these, you know, they all meant uh, thread, okay, or rope. Okay, this is ancient Hebrew, the H, you know, clearly you will see that it is a flattened, you know, uh, 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 representation of a rope. And uh, it's also, you can look at it as a link to, and then uh, the, this actually takes the form from Sumerian. But Sumerian, uh, the Sumerian you know, also actually, you know, they uh, found the sound of like salmon. Salmon is how they call a thick rope. And the form wise, you know, they are together. But now you will see that the H actually start to transform to the S. And um, in English, you will have to think about assemble. This part is actually from, come from the very original sound uh, when you put three sounds together to make an ensemble okay and then this is uh, what you believe was Greek you know it's the sin and sim like symphony synergy synchronized and then the more than English word sync when you sing something together and then uh, uh, oh Hungarian runic you know this is an H and then in South Arabian this is an S and actually a lot of the writing forms you know uh, you will see a lot of different um, version no I mean different so-called families of writing you know they always have one way the same form on one side is an S the other is an H it's always interchangeable between this one and that one because the earliest vocabulary has a lot to do with thread making because they made up a large part a large part of the human civilization and uh, I will give you the concept of this with the thread you will have this hair uh, the word air actually this is used as a, a visual symbol you don't even uh, pronounce it following the Greek way and but then you see the herd and the heritage you will see that in a human head it is always a line coming down okay and then in ancient Hebrew they have also another form uh, putting it sideways when they put it sideways you can also understand it's a hinge a hurdle or a hedge something that bars you because a rope if you turn it this other side uh, horizontally it stops you from going somewhere or it ties you down from going forward okay so I will show you some uh, not uh, thing you think is more than like this sign right there you think a uh, hash is more than but then you will know that it's hash hatch and hatching the hatch is also you know like a screen you know a barrier the hatching is when you draw when you sketch you know those parallel lines that goes uh, both way horizontally and vertically so all this word it has a lot to do with the same concept in our human head coming from the rope from the bar and but then I will show you a Chinese writing can you see uh, very obviously a hedge is written there and the word uh, later on was written like this this one is almost like this this one is almost like your more than head um, hedge, hedge sign but then uh, the Chinese has a pronunciation for it is fan what is fan but fence okay as you can see this is Chinese pronunciation this is your English pronunciation so actually since from uh, ancient time uh, all these core words were already there so uh, that's why I keep saying that we share one single core uh, the sound is the key not the grammar we pay too much attention the grammar okay now I don't want to lead you further on I just want to give you this example to show you that uh, these signs you know existed a long time ago and then it has co closely connected with either twirling the rope or any fiber become a screen a block or a link you know both the opposite polar meaning and then I want to go back to the S symbol right there and again you have seen it quite a few times Chinese has this sin or sim to mean you know making two things into one or one single thing and this is the Chinese word for three we call it psalm you know and then uh, this is also you can see you know based on the same concept you put three uh, together as one we have the pronunciation the psalm or charm this to do with combine or join things together and then uh, as you can see we start to pile three together and, and all these three numbers 
is a puro, okay? And then um, the word actually uh, gradually uh, developed and then somehow you know you it you can actually see some what you you can see as a western edge right there okay so we use another indicator to further affirm that it is to means to sync something together this is tai tai sync is actually closely related to your sync word okay so and it's or carry also exactly the same meaning to uh, mean uh, together or to make something the same okay so um, again I want to uh, bring on the uh, the stolen matriarchal lineage um, I have shown this a few times already this is Hera uh, but from the Greek world this uh, thread is uh, written there you should look at it as a draw is drawn there but then they were told you that it has no sound but then English has conserved the writing and conserved the sound and um, but at that time you know they stopped pronouncing it you know it just visually you know letting people know that this is the real royal uh, divine line that the people actually were believing so um, uh, the Chinese has the same thing you know the holder of the rod the holder of the bow you know this bow has a lot to do with the female uh, uh, a bow which is the the worm itself and then the Chinese actually have a pronunciation as guan and Cantonese you know we use it you know a lot to mean a female uh, but then uh, in the dictionary written by men you know they were mostly you know translated as the, the emperor or a man you know okay so but uh, in the society it's still used mainly for a woman in a Cantonese society at least okay and then um, uh, then in Cantonese it pronounces Guan somehow in Mandarin it pronounces Jun okay Jun you can see that you know uh, when the Roman comes you know this comes you know it becomes Juno somehow it seems that the men Mandarin uh, has adopted, you know, the Roman or the Roman has adopted the Mandarin sound. I, I cannot say which one is which, but then you will see that as time went by, they also share the same sound, okay? And then I, again, it means a a female ruler and then I want to show you again old English is Quen you know we say Guan this is Quen and this is what you say Queen okay again Queen is the real bloodline you know, of the ruling family not someone married to a king okay she has the legitimacy of ruling okay but since it was silenced the Greek in uh, used another symbol to prove to represent that sound you know this Eho uh, they said is a God's blood uh, but then it has a uh, um, but then it pronounce a different shape. That's why Christ would carry this symbol. Instead of chasing after the symbol, the Greek uh, started to look for this cross as the symbol of the royal uh, divine line. So that's why Christ is so important. Uh, they will keep asking whether Jesus is the Christ. For them, this cross bearer is actually the real uh, um, descendant of the divine line, okay? As you said, the son of God, okay? So so as you said, it's blue in color, but uh, uh, you will see some um, similarity in this later. But then I will show you uh, now uh, how the physical sign comes to be. Uh, in Chinese, we have uh, the way of saying guan ji. Guan ji actually means the son or descendant of this uh, Gwen, okay, and then this queen's uh, line is actually uh, become you know gradually it's understood as any aristocratic or educated man. It actually has the undertone of a royal lineage, okay. So this all these aristocrats always carries their symbol. What symbol is that? Is this kind of a tassel a line that sometimes you know they put all kinds of jade along with it, and this is a very important symbol of uh, of a descendant of the Gwen, okay? So it this is already beginning the marker of the of the um of that royal matriarchal line, okay? So now uh, I want you to, to pay attention to the sound of that. This actually be, uh, sounds as ji in Chinese. I can write it in different ways. Still as ji jai something like that. Okay, so it means the seed, the offspring. You know, it all actually you can actually understand as seed, a seed also. Okay, in English seed. Okay, this ji actually um uh. We have uh, a very almost like a formula in ancient time. We say ji ji xun xun ji ji xun xun means.
means endless descendants. So we repeat this ji twice to speak, and it, this is exactly like the jizit in the Hebrew uh, language. Jizit means the tassel or the fringe of the lock of hair, but it has a very very strange appearance because you know if you look at the Orthodox Jewish people, they always hair wear an inner vest inside underneath their shirt, and in that four corner they are always this tassel right there, and the tassel is supposed to be blue in there is a one blue line just like the Greek talk about their God's line okay so this should be one blue line that runs through all those tassels but then because you know they are uh, the the dying process the argument now they they have it totally white but what I show you here is a very modern version they don't care about you know what kind of light white I mean blue or purple they are showing so it's just a carry-on of their tradition so this is exactly a tassel again and then uh, it follows the blue color right there you know so that means that Jewish people have that uh, knowledge of the blue blood and also the Greek also talked about it and also you will see a lot of Sanskrit the Hinduism also believed in it it is so even in the Mayan you know sometimes you see the where they paint their god blue in color so this thing has, seems to existed since ancient time and shared by all cultures okay so but then um, I will show you the western world also you know have their own version of using a thread to to express their lineage to God, you know, so this is some Franciscan monks, you know, but their God, uh, their, their, their show, um, I mean, they show their lineage, you know, by this thread right there. So all this a physical symbol of their claiming their lineage. Okay, so in Chinese, you know, uh, this word is called Sun, this is the S form okay either the H or the S okay soon is the descendant also so you will see that in ancient time uh, or whoever thinks that they have this royal lineage you know the, the royalty also think they, they have the link to God just like this one you know this is uh, monopolized by the emperor himself the emperor will always wear that you know very very visual symbol of lineage because he believed that he is the son of God also so uh, you we see that this is in the on the Chinese side you know how they represent their their uh, divine lineage and then now you will see that this is in the um, Christian church and this is the papal uh, this, uh, arm okay you will see that this tassel right here this red line right there is also a very very important symbolic of their line right there it comes down from this split right there the crown right there and then the split of the two thing and then the splitting action is also very important you will see that this is a very subtle way of saying that they 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 follow this line you know uh, coming from generation to generation the line of uh, God's teaching okay and then how about the lineage in Islam the uh, in Islam they don't do it physically but they do it in in speech okay I will show you a number of words in Arabic. You know, this is heart. Heart is a very hard line. It means the border and the boundary. And you can imagine it as the ancient Hebrew writing, you know, to put it sideways, you know, the H form in sideways. And then um, they have another heart. You know, the dot here means it's a guttural H sound. This is actually the, 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 the actual uh, written sound, those the heart. Okay, this is what you always see in transcription in English now. That means a line and then the height height actually means a thread and then you will see half half is actually uh, means behind and after something behind and after sometimes it means your descendant okay it actually comes also from the line word okay and then the the halif halifa actually um uh, nowadays you look you see it spelled like this, you know, in, in, in writing. But and sometimes it also changed to caliphate. As I said, you know, this uh, always get confused in the transcription. But in the uh, if you are an Arab, you will khalifa, you will pronounce it that way. But in English, you pronounce it sometimes as khalifa, khalifa, whatever you, you pronounce it. Uh, it actually means a successor, okay? And who's successor? This is successor of Mohammed. Because since Mohammed uh, started the religion, 
religion of Islam. This is what they talk about. You know, all the imam and, and all the, the, the leaders should be, you know, from the family of Muhammad. Okay. But before we I go on to that, I want to show you the the, the, the word side by side in the Chinese world. Okay. And we have a word hut. Okay, remember this is hut. Okay, hut. We also means the, the line of control and also the axle. Sometimes it means the linchpin of a wheel. So this is a line that you know also bounds something. It's like a hinge. Okay, so this is a uh, same sound, almost the same meaning. But then you will see, I will show you tons of pictures right there. These are the writing in Chinese. This is Hai, actually means the line or the bind by, by a rope or a line, okay? So actually it's used as a verb or used as a noun, Hai, okay? You will see this Hai cut. And then um, you will see this is a Chinese. We pronounce this as how exactly is this half right there? This how this is half. Okay, you will see that the line with it with a uh, unseen energy like an A form dangling behind. It for us it also means behind or after. It also means descendant. Okay, and then uh, we have a, another word that you can see. You know a. a a little baby holding a thread, we you, we pronounce it soon, okay? This is definitely descendant, okay? So this is Khalifa, is actually also the holder of the line, means successor, is as if the Chinese were using picture to express the same meaning, okay? And this one is, uh, the, the as I said, the monopolized by the emperor. This is how he say I, as if he holds all the line of the world into his own hand, okay? He is the divine descendant, He's the holder of the divine lineage, okay? And I have shown you a few times how, you know, the twisting of the thread, the astral and the zetro, and then it become the hang, you know, the hauser right here, the thread. But then, and it also, you know, in this world, either you combine or you split, you know? But in this world, you know, um, and I will explain a little bit in the lineage of Islam, and, and since the the, uh, the beginning of Islam, you know, right after the death of uh, the Prophet Muhammad, there's already begin a, a split, okay? So instead of uniting, there is a split right there. That's how you get the Sunni. The Sunni would have said, you know, it's they understood themselves as a lawful one, just like... Uh, the Chinese will say soon is actually a lawful descendant. Okay, and then the other one, the other one will be called Shi'at, right? The Shi'at will be understood, you know, in Arabic, it means someone that adhere to Ali. Who's Ali? Ali is the son-in-law of the Prophet Muhammad, and also he's the nephew of, of uh, the family of Muhammad, okay? So actually they were in the same family, but this split began, you know, because uh, one some follows, you know, the Sunni, the others follow the, um, the, the branch of Ali. So that's how we human beings begin to split and split and split, okay? So um, I just read um, a book about, you know, the, um, the splitting of the, the Christians, okay? So it says that by 19,000, I mean, I mean, sorry, by, by 1900, I mean, I mean, 1900, 1, 1, there were 30,000 Protestant denominations in America, in the world. Okay, so believe it or not, you know, the author also couldn't um, testify, you know, whether this is correct or not. That's what he heard. But you will see that, you know, sometimes we combine, sometimes we split. It is all in the image of a thread, okay? So as I said, the Islam doesn't follow the, the, the visual um, lineage, but they use the words to explain this uh, thread concept, you know? Okay, so in another religion, how about that? So I will show you the... Uh, uh, hieroglyph this is also sin or shin or sesh okay as you can see it is combining or splitting okay so I will show you the Chinese. The Chinese also have sin or sim. It means one or solo or single. It's combining together. And we have sin, which is directly means the line of the thread. Okay. So, but this form actually exists still until now. Uh, this is the symbol, the, 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 uh, the ribbon that you wear whenever you go out for a march. Okay. This is the symbol of a symphony. You know, this sin, sim, you know, they all mean still exactly the same. So, uh, 
that means you are in line with an idea and, a, in, and also in agreement and also you are in solidarity with a concept, okay? So otherwise you won't wear that ribbon, right? So um, I will see you uh, now. I go to Hinduism, okay? The Brahmin family. The Brahmin family uh, uh, believe themselves to be guardian of the sacred knowledge. And they are the special lineage that got this sacred knowledge. So what do they wear? Can you see this little uh, thread right there? This is very, very important for the Brahmin family. And on a good side, you know, they do follow the sacred lineage, but the bad sign, this is why the car system still to have to bring in all this injustice in this whole world, okay? This is uh, in India, this is uh, in Burma, already a slightly different, you know, custom, but you can see that they are still wearing that thread, but um, either, other than the, the, the men, the people that we are wearing, you will, if you go and look into the ancient statue, you will see that many of this statue, even God, the Buddha, Sifta, the sativa themselves, they were also wearing this line. Can you see all this line were everywhere? This is from Hinduism to, to, to Buddhism. You know, this synergy is all there. So to in order to represent that you belong to this thread, belong to this line, you always wear this thread, no matter what religion you are. And, and again, now I go to this sash of the royalty. That's why I changed the word to the purple color, okay? And then, um, as you can see, you know, even the, the whole of Europe, you know, the, uh, all those royal family, you know, they were all wearing this sash. Even in uh, uh, our common world, you know, you will see that Miss America also were crowned, you know, to wear all this sash themselves. So this sash are also very, very important. So, um, and I want to show you the very, very important lineage in, uh, in, he uh, in Hebrew, I mean, in the Jewish world, okay? Because ancient Hebrew has this 2H form, and then Chinese has this 2H form, both to, has to do with something like an air or a thread, and this become Hava. Hava is something between air and also, you know, she's very important because she's the first woman, and this is a very, very important matrilineal uh, line that, uh, we we actually uh, lost track of. We keep thinking, um, I cannot finish this. Maybe I will just uh, go on, you know, just talking a little bit about this. Uh, next week, I will continue with that slide. But uh, the Jewish world is a very matrilineal, uh, important world. So... Um